Welcome, it's Alex the Boat Guy down in the boatyard taking a look at boats. Today I thought discussing keels and different keel configurations or hull configurations of different types of boats and what better place to discuss them than in the boatyard. Starting with this boat right here, it's a Bavaria 40. It's a fin keel, spade, rudder type sailing vessel. I'll walk down the hull and we can talk about the advantages and disadvantages of that design. Starting with the spade rudder here on racer cruiser style hull. Unsupported in the sense that there's no skeg. Fairly narrow, fairly deep. Provides good control because it's fairly far aft and very little resistance. In describing this particular race or cruiser hull, you can see this flat section right here. You get going down on a reach or off wind. That's where you get up on the wave and almost start to surf. This provides the least wetted surface. Speaking of wetted surface and keel design, what is wetted surface? Wetted surface is the total area of your hull the amount of hull that's actually touching the water. So the more wetted surface, the more friction, the slower the speed. And in this case, the least wetted surface, the least friction, the faster the speed. This is the classic designed fin keel. This happens to be a Bavaria. German built boat, racer cruiser. It's iron, typically. A lot of the weight is right down at the bottom of the keel here. This particular style is bolted right through the hull. So what defines a racer cruiser? And what defines an offshore cruiser? And what's in between? Uh, these are the uh, prime indications here when you see the fin keel and the spade rudder, that's a racer cruiser. So what that gives you is off wind performance, a very reasonable upwind performance, but less offshore performance. Question then is why does it not give you the offshore performance ultimately over a long keel or offshore type hull. With this type of keel configuration and rudder configuration, it's as fast as you can possibly make a hull. When you get offshore and you start dropping into the trenches, coming up off a peak of a wave, uh, in my experience what ends up happening is that keel being only four or five feet long, gets to the peak of a wave and can pivot. So your boat can then fall off its course depending on your conditions. Whereas around the markers here, flat water, inland waters, lakes, large bays, um, you know, up to say three foot swell, this style of hull can still get through that swell and make your mark. This style of hull here is known as a long keel with a cutaway forefront. What defines a long keel? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Essentially what the long keel boat does is follows a straighter course. There is more wetted surface, so it's not as a performance boat, especially in the upwind situation. On the flip side, you have the option of a longer, straighter, more solidified course line, as well as your comfort zone. Here in this instance, we can clearly see the difference between the racer cruiser. One of the aspects of the long keel is that primarily this design of boat, the keel is built at the same time as when the boat is built. So the keel and the hull are integral. Whereas on a racer cruiser, the keel is usually bolted on separately. 
on the full keel boat or the long keel boat, this the rudder is essentially part of the hull. So the post, the rudder post goes right up here. And the bottom end of the rudder hangs on a shoe right here, which is part of the whole keel. So this rudder cannot go anywhere. It's integral. Compared to a racer cruiser, this is much more protected, less likely to be impacted by a solid object. But again, this type of hull, there's much more wetted surface, so then therefore less performance. So taking a look at the full keel Bayfield 32 style hull here compared to any racer cruiser, doesn't matter if you're talking about Hunter, or Bavaria, uh, CNC, CS, a lot of these types of boats are similar configurations. Uh, your long keel boat here, safer, more solid, uh, longer passage making capabilities, sails in a straight line, um, but being much more boat and much more keel, there's that more wetted surface, less performance. All of these things are a trade-off. I think every boat is a trade-off. What are some of the trade-offs or sacrifices? Speed, comfort, that type of thing. One is meant for one purpose. One is really meant for the other purpose. There is an in-between version. We can talk about that. What would be the compromise between a full keel boat and a full racer cruiser style? Taking a look now at the compromise design between your racer cruiser, which is your spade rudder and your fin keel and the long keel style hull design. This is what they call modified fin. What is a modified fin? It's a much longer fin keel. It's still a fin keel, but I'll show you there's a very unique cutaway here in the aft section where it joins the rudder. This is the aspect here that's unique about the modified fin is the skeg hung rudder. The skeg is actually part of the hull. It's all glassed, solid. But what's the advantage here is that the rudder hangs off the aft end of that skeg. And that skeg not only protects the rudder, but helps to keep your course line. Another advantage as well is you don't have to have an eight or seven foot draft, you can have a five and a half foot draft with a much longer keel. Most of that keel is the actual ballast. That keel is longer and deeper than the skeg. So if you did bump the bottom, bump the ground somewhere, the skeg is about six inches higher than the bottom of the rudder. And you can see here the bottom of the skeg is exactly parallel with the bottom of the rudder, but it's still protecting it. It's a decent sized rudder. It's probably four feet tall and an average of about 18 inches wide, giving you lots of steerage. And in fact, this is a very fine hull, a very solid, safe, smooth performance or semi-performance sailing hull. Taking a look at the bow section of this boat, it's a much shorter section than a racer cruiser would have. It's only about eight feet between the bow and the forward end of the keel versus on a racer cruiser, it could be anywhere 10, 12 feet. Much more boat, there's much more volume to this vessel. Little to no flat sections. This would be a very safe and comfortable offshore sailor in the sense that you have these big round bilges. That's for your, not only your displacement, your stability, but you also have storage and volume inside for tankage, etc. Looking at the keel, it's a very long fin keel. And this is a very safe, long passage maker style hull very solidly built. The top of that keel is going to be at least eight, if not 10 feet long. So what that does is it gives you a much more stable, controlled 
coarse line rather than a short fin. A short fin will tend to pivot. These long fins here will help guide you on your long passage, especially dropping down into a trough. Uh, thanks for watching uh, this little documentary now, a short discussion on different types of hulls and keels. You have your advantages, your disadvantages. And uh, in conclusion, I think everybody would probably agree that all boats are a compromise. There's always something to sacrifice for one for the other. Uh, performance, speed, comfort, all these types of things come into play when you're looking at yachts and yacht design and discussion of the use of which boat you're going to use. In conclusion then, when you're shopping for a vessel, just ask yourself, what am I going to use this boat for and how? That will help you decide on what type of boat you're really looking for if you are looking for a vessel. If you're just looking for more information, I'd be happy to do a specific video on a specific vessel for you. Thanks for watching.